Okay, anamorphic lens versus spherical lens. What's the main difference? Well, I'm gonna show you guys. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Jeff Davis. I'm a freelance filmmaker here in Texas. And if you're new to the channel and you like the content, please hit that subscribe button, like the video. And speaking of videos, I am super pumped to show you guys this video today. Man, I'm so excited. We are gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of a 50 millimeter anamorphic lens versus a 50 millimeter spherical lens. Well, this one's not a prime lens, it's actually a 12 to 60, but we're gonna set it at 50 millimeters. We're gonna set the apertures the same, all the camera settings the same. We are gonna make this comparison as close as possible so I can show you guys the main differences in anamorphic and spherical. Okay, so before we jump into this side-by-side -side footage and I can really show you guys the comparison and the different looks that these lenses produces, I think one really important thing to understand is how exactly a lens works. Well, that is very interesting. Please tell me more. And so when you put your lens on your camera, turn your camera on, it's picking up all the light rays that are coming into the camera through the lens and it's causing the light rays to bend which is a refraction. So it's causing this refraction and it's causing all of these different light rays to come and to meet at one small focal point on your sensor. Those light rays differ where they meet. They don't exactly meet at the same exact point. Some of them kind of cross over just a tad and this is called spherical aberration. So that's when you'll kind of notice bending in the lines of your image just a little bit. So what they do is they put different pieces of glass inside this lens to correct the spherical aberration. That is correct. And there's blue light rays, there's green light rays, there's red light rays, and all three of those colors meet at different points. So this is why you have so many different pieces of glass inside a lens because it'll correct those aberrations, it'll correct the color shifts. And so honestly, that's the difference between a really good lens and a really cheap lens, is really good expensive lenses are gonna have a lot more pieces of glass in here that correct all those small aberrations. Whereas cheap lenses aren't gonna have as much glass and probably cheaper glass that don't correct those aberrations as much. So that's why a lens choice is honestly a really important deal because different lenses are gonna have different pieces of glass that correct aberrations slightly different. That's why there's so many different lenses that can put out slightly different color tones than other lenses. Some of them are more sharper and some of them are more softer. There's just a lot of mechanics that really go in to creating a lens. So the first anamorphic lenses were actually developed around 1927 and they were used in tank periscopes during World War I. And they installed them in the tanks that way the tankers could get a wider view of what's happening outside the tank. It actually wasn't until around 1952 that 20th Century Fox bought the rights for the Cinescope process and they wanted to start using anamorphic lenses. That way they could overcome the limitations of the 35 millimeter film frame and they wanted to get that widescreen look. They wanted to capture a more wider look than what the 35 millimeter captured. So they started developing anamorphic lenses and that's when the whole cinematography world began to change with this new anamorphic lens. So the main differences in these lenses is that a spherical lens will project the image without affecting the aspect ratio at all. And the anamorphic lens on the other hand, when this one projects an image, it's compressed along the horizontal dimension, usually compressed by a factor of two. So that's two times compression into this little square. That's a lot of nuts! If you just take a look at the front of these two lenses, you can just right off the bat see such a huge difference. 
You can see the anamorphic lens, how it's got that square shape to it. Inside, it's got some oval pieces of glass. I want that. And if you look at this one, I mean, it's just perfect circle. You don't see any of that type of oval or oblong glass in there or the square shape. So when an anamorphic lens captures an image, it's pretty much capturing twice the amount of horizontal information as a spherical lens would. And it's compressing it down into a little square, which later in post, you then have to de-squeeze your image back to the widescreen format. <laughs> So a few more cool things about anamorphic lenses is they produce a shallower depth of field, thus resulting, in my opinion, a more cinematic image when you have that shallower depth of field. They also produce super cool flares, and honestly, in most like action movies, they use anamorphic lenses. And you'll notice because they'll have those blue flares that are running horizontal across the screen whenever lights are shining into the camera. And you also get these really oblong oval shaped bokeh that's in the background and so those are two telltale signs that they're shooting on anamorphic that's very interesting and it just gives an overall different look than a spherical lens would give you which in my opinion i i love that look i love the look that the anamorphic lens produces so let's jump into the test footage i really want to show you guys the side by side between the anamorphic lens and the spherical lens Everything I filmed was all at 50 millimeters. It was at the same aperture, same ISO, all the same settings, the exact same angle. All I did was just swap lenses out. So I wanted this comparison to be as close as possible. That way you guys could really see the main differences in these lenses. So let's check it out. Okay, well I hope you guys enjoyed those clips. I've actually pulled a couple of them out so we can go through them and so I can really just kind of point out the main differences in these lenses if you guys couldn't already tell. So the first clip is just gonna be this, this still shot I got of this older church that's here in town. And you can really see how much of a wider angle that the anamorphic lens captures versus the spherical lens. And in my opinion, I mean, this image looks so much more cinematic than the regular spherical 50 millimeter. So on to the next shot, I just got this shot of this old grain factory, this abandoned grain factory, and there's a train track that runs across it, and then I just wanted to get a shot of the cars driving over the tracks, driving past the factory, but we also have the sun just shining right into the lens, so we're really going to be able to see the difference in the way these two lenses take in flares. And so first up, we just have the, the 50 millimeter spherical lens, which doesn't look bad. I mean, it's a cool looking shot, but when you put up the anamorphic lens, 
I mean, look at these flares that are just shining down the lens and you see this blue flare coming across uh, on the upper third. And this widescreen, I'm just, I'm obsessed with the widescreen format that this lens produces. It just looks so good capturing such a wider angle of view. And the flares that it produces are just so cool in my opinion. So here we got a couple at night to where we can really test the flares. The first one is the spherical lens. I mean, we see these cars driving by and it, you know, it, it, it's a good looking shot, but it looks pretty basic in my opinion. So jumping to the anamorphic, uh, we can see, you know, this street light up here, how it kind of has these star-like flares coming off of it. And same with all the headlights on the cars, you know, they got these really interesting flares that, you know, kind of star-like. And then, of course, we have these horizontal flares, these bluish horizontal flares just running across the whole screen. I think it just adds such a different texture, style, atmosphere to your film and it's just a different look that our eyes don't normally see. So it really is a, a very cinematic looking image that comes out of it. And this shot right here, this is really a good one. So you can see how much wider this lens actually gets. I just filmed this parasign head on. And I mean, you can see there's the spherical lens. And then when it jumps to the anamorphic, I mean, look how much more it's capturing uh, with this anamorphic lens. Well guys, if I didn't mention it before, this is the Siri 50mm anamorphic lens. This lens will run you about $700, which is extremely cheap when it comes to anamorphic lenses. Anamorphic lenses are very expensive, so this was kind of the first one to come on the market at a super affordable price and it, it really produces a very quality image. So I believe they also make them in 35mm and 85mm. They should all run you about the same price. It's completely manual, so when you put it on your camera, you're not gonna be changing any aperture, any lens settings um, through your camera because this lens is completely manual. And I am really excited that I have this anamorphic lens in my collection. So thank you guys for checking out this video. If you liked the video, please smash that like button. And I mean, if you didn't like the video, smash that like button. But if you're new to the channel and you like the content, uh, help me out. I'm really trying to grow the channel, so please subscribe to it. Click the notification bell, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Let's jump right into this. Obviously, these are two.